Vanguard is a program to investigate advanced architectures and advanced technologies and their viability in supporting the NNSA mission codes. Specifically, Astra is a project, the first project within the Vanguard program. Astra was selected from the phrase per aspera ad astra, which means to the stars with difficulty. So Astra basically means star. Astra is going to investigate the viability of using 64-bit high-performance computing ARM processors for the NNSA mission. Previously, ARM processors have been around for a very long time. They're very ubiquitous, so we have them in our cars, we have them in our cell phones. But up until recently, we haven't had ARM processors or ARM-based processors that were viable for use in our HPC mission. Astra will be the largest ARM-based processor cluster and we'll be using that to prove out the viability of the NNSA mission codes. So Astro will have a theoretical peak performance of 2.3 petaflops. And while that's, that's very fast, what is most important is the percentage of that theoretical peak that we can achieve for our actual mission applications. That will tell us whether or not Vanguard is viable for our NNSA mission applications. Sandia was chosen to host the Vanguard program and the Astra project in particular because of our long history with advanced architectures. We've had an advanced architecture testbed program now since 2010 where we investigate a very broad selection of technologies and their applicability towards high performance computing in general in the NNSA mission. The advanced architecture testbed program has allowed us to form very close relationships with OEMs and technology providers in general. So this has allowed us to have a good understanding and a good influence over future technologies. ARM has emerged into this, this pool of advanced technologies that we can hopefully leverage for our NNSA mission. One of the things that we weren't able to do with the testbed program is actually test things at large scale. These were typically investigations that were somewhere between 16 and 32 nodes. To really understand the viability of a technology for the NNSA mission, it's important to do large-scale testing. I feel that Sandia is the best choice for Astra, um, uh, largely because of its uh, our legacy of uh, research. Uh, and we have some of the best people in the world, best capabilities in the world. Our facilities folks have had their eyes towards you know, next generation technologies for data centers. And the planning of this facility has enabled us to serve Astra well. For building the very first big ARM system, it's great for Sandy as a whole. And to host it in this lead gold data center uh, is just a plus. So when you talk about lead gold buildings, it's a point system. So basically you have to be very energy efficient and you have to have a lot of good infrastructure built into the sustaining infrastructure. Uh, this is Sandia's very first lead gold building and it happened to be our data center. The design of the data center should be a data center proper. So it's not fancy. It's very functional. Every piece of the floor space is usable. There's no spans in the middle. So we're able to have a continuation of racks and very limited eye candy in the data center. It's basically a functional data center. We're going to save millions of gallons per year of water just by this thermosiphon, which is a, a very efficient way to do heat exchange of the hot water that comes out of a big HPC data center. It's Pretty uh, cool technology. It basically works off a uh, phase change of refrigerant. There's no pumps, it just has fans. You take the warm water into the thermal siphon and the refrigerant changes state, rises up, and it's cooled off by some fans and it drops back down and cools the water entering. It's pretty neat. We expect to save somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 18 million gallons of water a year once we're fully deployed. So Astra is a water-cooled indirect system and it fits perfectly in the design for this data center. It has coils internally and fans internally and our closed loop system works well with it. So we'll basically only have about 8% air cooling and uh, the rest liquid cooling on the system. On the air side, hot air rises. So we allow the hot air to rise and just stay collectively up there and we take out the hot air that we don't need. The rest of the hot air just stays as a cushion up there, an insulator, if you will, and we leave that up there. It circulates back down and pushes that hot air up there. So it gives us a more open look and a better air dynamic situation. When 725 was initially constructed for Red Storm, it was constructed with expansion in mind. Being able to just add on to that building was very convenient for us and we could really expand our ability to host high performance computing platforms beyond Astra or maybe in Vanguard Phase 2, whatever we choose for Vanguard Phase 2 will, will likely be put in 725 East. 
Having the system delivered while the building was still under construction, that's, that was a, a significant endeavor. It was a horse race basically, so in their interim we're developing the Astra system and getting bidders to bid on the system, and at the same time we're designing and building the data center. So we knew uh, it was on a collision course. So all our folks were safety trained and would uh, wear hard hats and appropriate protective gear and always be aware of the construction activities around us. It's uh, sort of like you're building a plane or cargo plane while it's flying. Fortunately, we were able to deliver the machine uh, while the, the final construction activities were still going on. So everyone has um, a role, like the Unisys team. They're cabling and putting the machine components together. So all the teams are rolling the racks in place, setting them in place. Then my team takes over and connects all the infrastructure, the cooling, the power, making sure the floor is intact, all the cutouts are done. My team is going to operate the machine over the life of the project. From the start, we were part of the RFP effort architects and folks within my team that were either on the I.O. or the system software side were part of the uh, evaluation and uh, selection for the Astro machine. And then as it came closer, we had several folks within my group working on the system software stack, which is going to be the operating system that drives the machine. And we had our storage folks, I.O. folks, working close to make sure that they'll have sufficient I.O. to deliver the cycles or deliver the mission of Astra. Then we also had our hardware folks getting involved, so they're familiar with the hardware and infrastructure and how to service and help maintain the platform. Our intent is to have our folks that manage the systems day to day to fully understand the machine and be able to help users and help diagnose or help point, point out hardware problems or help keep the machine functional. I'm real excited about Astra and its role within Sandia, within the nation, and within the world in the sense of it's really opening up a whole new platform. I feel that this is a milestone for Sandia. This is the cream on the coffee here.